Welcome to Weekend 101, your chance to have a look at the important stuff in the world of news this week. We start with a debacle forming around the court-ordered release of the 2009 spy tapes, which paved the way for Jacob Zuma to become president. In March this year, the Supreme Court of Appeal ordered that transcripts of the tapes be handed over to the Democratic Alliance. But this hasn't happened due to a series of legal wrangling and claims that the tapes don't even exist. The tapes allegedly contain a conversation which clearly illustrate a political agenda behind the bringing of corruption charges against our now president. In the latest twist this week, Zuma's presidential legal advisor, Michael Hulley, says that the tapes won't be released, citing a 2009 confidentiality agreement between the president and the MPA. Ever since corruption charges were first brought against him way back in 2005, Jay-Z has claimed his innocence and said he has nothing to hide. Well, Mr. President, I'll ask you this question. If you do claim to be so squeaky clean, why don't you allow the spy tapes to be released so that the whole country can have a good listen? Staying locally, an 11th hour agreement was reached between AFRI Forum, the ANC, and expelled Youth League President Julius Malema over the controversial Shoot the Boer debacle. In 2011, the struggle song Aya Saba Magwala, which contains the words Dubule Ibunu, or Shoot the Boer, was declared hate speech by the South Gauteng High Court. AFRI Forum decided to take the matter to the Supreme Court of Appeal after Malema continued to sing the song post the judgment. The settlement was reached in the interest of promoting reconciliation and preventing inter-community friction while all parties agreed to continue debate about cultural heritage and sensitivity. Now, while this could be seen as a victory for reconciliation, had the matter actually gone to court, it could have gone a long way in deciding the firm legal parameters for hate speech in South Africa. Moving overseas, next week Americans head to the polls to decide who they will have as their president for the next four years. It would seem this presidential election has not caught the interest of the world as previous ones have, barring the comical memes of both candidates, the incumbent Barack Obama and his challenger Mitt Romney. Of course, the states themselves are preoccupied with the destruction of Hurricane Sandy, but what does this lack of interest say about their diminishing role in the world of global politics? Does it really matter who the next US president will be? Indications are that the race will be tighter than people think. And lastly, the 1st of November provides the opportunity for men around the globe to nurture fluff found on their upper lip. It's Movember, so expect women to squirm and men to bask in their apparent manliness as 70s and 80s era style moustaches become the order of the day. Now, despite all the moaning and groaning, often from the fairer sex, this cultivation of tashes has the goal of raising funds and awareness around prostate and testicular cancer. So I don't really see what all the fuss is about. Go forth and grow. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your Weekend 101.